Welcome back. Anybody else's roots need doing? <laughs> Honestly, a year before all this lockdown and social distancing started, I had already made up my mind to let my highlights grow out and uh, see how much grey I can produce and go au naturel. However, I have to tell you that I'm glad now, in a way, for the lockdown because growing out highlights and exposing roots... <laughs> yes, I'm happy to be home and uh, let nature take its course. <laughs> but I'm not here to talk about roots per se as our hairline or hairial. I'm talking about our orchid roots. What do we do with them when they get a little bit funky, like this? They kind of climb out of the pot, which is a little bit, you know, counterproductive if you really, really need all the roots you can get. Well, in my case, here I have a Phalaenopsis, a gorgeous white blousy Phalaenopsis. We call her Maximilian. And here is an Ascocentrum Ampuyathea, clone name Pink Dreamer. So I'm going to start with the Phalaenopsis first because she needs to soak. I don't want to be breaking roots, but I do want to get more roots in to the pot. The reason I'm doing this now is because it's growing season. Despite the fact that these were aerial roots, I am speculating, and I can only speculate when it comes to some things that orchids do, I am speculating that whatever grows in the pot from now on will be fine. So my microfiber was there to add some humidity because I got tired of spraying the sphagnum moss. I'm going to put everything I don't need away. That includes Ascocentrum. You're later. Okay, so I have to unpot her first. And for that reason, I thought I'd take you along for the ride. She has been in this setup now for two years. I can say she never skipped a beat because there was no rotting. I never had put her into rescue mode, but she wasn't actually doing a lot of vegetative growth last year. So I didn't let her bloom or produce a spike. I cut them off so that this year she will really focus on vegetative growth. I mentioned that in my delinquent Phalaenopsis video. This root for several days, I've been soaking it in water on and off in a separate pot but uh, it has died back. Not too concerned about that. Let's get her out of the pot first because she needs to soak. I will put her in some seaweed solution because I want her to soak. And get more pliable on the roots. Okay, these aren't looking too bad. I have some remains of decay in the bottom of the pot and I will definitely give this a rinse before we put her back in if she will fit back into this pot you never know let's just clean her up a little bit see what we've got before we even bother soaking her now there is quite a bit of decay at the bottom I have, I actually had no intention of removing the stem here. We'll see what happens when we get into it a bit further, but it is looking rather black and nasty and it could do with a good cleanup. I'm thinking that the more I get into this, the less I want to disturb her. My intention for this video was not how to cut a stem. We can do that next year. And seeing as it was fine in the environment that it was in, I'm going to leave it at that. 
My intention is here just to clean her up before actually soaking her in some seaweed to put her back in the pot. Clearly a dead root. So that's what you want to get rid of. I'm going to do, I'm still planning on a repot video, but I'm waiting for this orchid to do what it needs to do before I can even begin to repot. Otherwise I will probably fail miserably. All right, that's all I'm gonna do for now. I'm not gonna mess around too much. There's one more down there. I will spray it with hydrogen peroxide before putting her back in the leka. First of all, let's focus on the roots. Two years in semi-hydro, not so bad. It's not so bad. And the plan is a big pot with seaweed in it RO water and get everything that's aerial and dry in there, pliable, and give her some strength before we put her back where she belongs. And now I'm going to take her out of the heat because all this is stressing her out and we'll deal with uh, Ascocentra. So I would normally be using gloves and working from one orchid to the next. I would be switching those gloves out. As I don't have that, I'm going to disinfect my hands and my cutting tools in case I need to use them. Now, my thought process with Ascocentra here is to get her back into the same pot. If I cannot, because I don't want to snap these roots, if I cannot, I've brought myself a bigger pot to have a little bit of more playroom. Third option, if none of that works, I'm going to lay her down on the side to take advantage of these growing tips to grow into the leka and get used to the environment. Several days now, I have been mummifying these roots to keep them supple and hopefully be able to bend them into the pot. Let me just take her off right here. I saw a little branching thing already going on in the pot. I'd like to encourage that. I have to be really careful because it's right on the edge of a lecker piece. in their height at all. Most of it will be recycled. Now let's have a look and get this old one out. I'm going to put this in bleach and then I'm going to wash it in the washing machine. Ah, there's a little fern growing on there. How funny. <laughs> and put it in the washing machine to recycle it and clean it up. So these are okay. These have dried off at the end. The microfiber was of no use in that case. But here is where I think I saw this one's Kaputski. where I saw, you see this was happening in the pot, that branch, it was on the surface but it was starting and I need to encourage that a bit. So let's see, let's not faff around too long because these do dry out relatively quickly. The things, the things we do. 
but you can also see that the color on this one has improved. I don't know if it's going to bloom for me though because it's in very deep shade. It used to be all purple, but now we see green in the midst of the freckles. All right, stop yapping, Nina. Just putting some leather in the bottom and I want that loop to come up. So I have a little bit more wicking going on through the media. So there's that. There's a little bit of the loop. And uh, the wicking will be a little bit higher. Now the question is, can I get these roots here to bend into the pot? Or do I need a new pot? I would like to get it further back, but I can't because I've got a stump there, which I want to take advantage of. So I'm not going to mess around much further. We have alternatives. Okay, we're bumping it up. Off camera, I just quickly rinsed my letter out because it had a little bit of debris on it and everything. Got my doohickey in there for eventualities. And in you go. And now let's see if we can get this situated in such a way that the roots can be in the pot. See if we've made the right call. If not, plan C. She goes in sideways. I've not heard any crunching. A broken root will snap. A damaged root will give sort of a crunching sound. But I know that I'm really bothering that root tip in the pot of this root. I'm really, really stressing that out. So that's not good. But I have the branching effect down there, which comforts me. There has been a bit of root damage. I can already see it. Even though I didn't hear it, the surface of this root is compromised. Normally they don't have a problem with that. I'll put the microfiber over the top and just keep it damp so that if it calluses over, it'll callus over with the membrane intact. And that's all there is to it. Looks a little bit too low for my liking. So we'll just jiggle her up a teeny bit so as not to de defeat the purpose of this exercise to get these roots inside. And that is good enough for me for now. And I will definitely keep a close, close eye on it because none of this makes me feel very confident, but I do know that this is how to get roots in a pot if they are not used to being in a pot, if they are stiff and unruly and external, aerial, this is how to do it. And 90% of the time it's successful. 
And then there's me making up the percentage for the statistics. Okay, let's just protect this a little bit. We place it over the root. And I will miss this every day. I will keep that nice and moist. So Pink Dreamer, I don't need the doohickey. I'm just going to leave her be and keep my fingers crossed. So the next one has been soaking and I'll go get her now. And I have gotten a bigger pot, which is probably not a bad idea. Instead of having to do this again in one year, I'm gonna leave Maximilian alone to grow because this orchid is now growing a new leaf. And that is what I was so anticipating. Seeing as I did not have very successful vegetative growth last year. I'm hoping to get a jump start on this season with the growth of a new leaf because I want those leaves to become big as they were before. You see there? I got a new leaf and these were the two little leaves from last year. Not much to say. This one's been starting well early winter and now it's another one and that's what I want. Lots of vegetative growth. So let's put you back for a little bit and get all your roots where I want them for now. You know, I don't mind aerial roots. I think they are funky and they have their place and I think it's all part of the orchid. I do mind, however, when I want a healthy orchid and it's not properly, properly established and hydrating in the pot, then every root is precious and I want that. So I will go quickly rinse this lecker out under the tap and clean it up. You can see that it is quite got some debris in it. I think that was better. Just clean up the lecker a little bit. Now I said I didn't want to disturb her too much. I just wonder if I can get rid of some of this organic stuff just by brushing it off gently and if, it, if that doesn't do it then I'm just going to leave it because clearly it had no effect adverse effect in the pot for two years so there's that I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to apologize for the disruption to this orchid now let's get you in the permanent home. I don't have a support in here because I don't mind her going in a pendant direction and I do not stake my spikes. I love pendant spikes. Doing the loop thing again. And now let's see if we can get all the roots in. If it's too long, sometimes you can turn the pot and maneuver the orchid in by turning the pot in the direction of the roots and gently lowering her. And that's all looking tickety-boo down there. And I'm going to place her a little bit more upright than she was because if there were, if I should be so lucky and get roots growing from the apex here, then they're not growing 
this way across the pot, but hopefully have it easier to go down into the media. So we still got that. How are you doing? I know, I know, I'm sorry. Let's get you situated and you'll be fine, I hope. Do me, do me the favor and be fine. Got a little branching thing going on there. I want to keep that in mind and encourage the branching to go down. I'm very cautious of one little branching root on this old stump. So that's why I'm fiddling around a little more than I normally would. I'm still backfilling before I tap, because this is how I want her. And if I tap too soon, there's too many gaps and she will start to shift and then I can take it all out and do it all again. We did it! By Jove, we did it! We did it! I've got the roots inside that I want inside. She is still sitting proud right there. So that's okay. And her roots didn't look so bad after two years of being in Lekka and semi-hydro. I'm very, very pleased. And now she can start leaning over the way she wants to. And maybe she'll give me some more roots to go into the Lekka even more. But basically, this is how I get roots into the pot that are aerial, wrap them in microfiber a couple of days, in this case with a Phalaenopsis, pre-soak is enough while you're preparing everything else because they're not as tough. Vander roots and Vandacious roots are a little bit more tougher. So that's what I do. And let's hope that both of them will perform better for it. Otherwise, all this is pointless exercise, but that is basically the method of how to get roots, aerial roots into a pot. Thank you so much everybody for watching. Penny Lane, if you have any questions, you know, keep asking, keep asking, all right? Don't stop. I'm here for you. Thank you everybody. Take care and have a great day. Bye.